Chapter Five of the Brownies, Their Book by Palmer Cox. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jude Summers. Chapter Five The Brownies at Lawn Tennis. One evening, as the woods grew dark, the brownies wandered through a park, and soon a building, quaint and small, appeared to draw the gaze of all. Said one, this place contains, no doubt, the tools of workmen hereabout. Another said, You're quite astray. The workmen's tools are miles away. Within this building may be found the fixtures for the tennis ground. A meadow near, both long and wide, for half the year is set aside, and marked with many a square and court for those who love the royal sport. On afternoons assembled there, the active men and maidens fair, keep up the game until the day has faded into evening gray. In other lands than those we tread, I played the game, another said, and proved my skill and muscles stout as server and as striker out. The lock that hangs before us there bears witness to the keeper's care and tramps or burglars might go by if such a sign should meet the eye but we who laugh at locks or law designed to keep mankind in awe may praise the keeper's cautious mind but all the same an entrance find ere long the path that lay between the building and the meadow green was crowded with the bustling throng all bearing implements along some lugging stakes or racket sets, and others buried up in nets. To set the posts and mark the ground, the proper size and shape around, with service line and line of base, and courts both left and right in place, was work that caused but slight delay, and soon the sport was under way. And then a strange and stirring scene was pictured out upon the green some watched the game and noted well where this or that one would excel and shouts and calls that filled the air proved even-handed playing there with anxious looks some kept the score and shouted vantage game all or to some love forty deuce to more but when deuce set the scorer cried applause would ring on every side at times so hot the contest grew established laws aside they threw and in the game where four should stand at least a dozen took a hand some tangled in the netting lay and some from baselands strayed away some hit the ball when out of place or scrambled through unlawful space but still no game was forced to halt because of this or greater fault and there they sported on the lawn until the ruddy streaks of dawn gave warning that the day was near and brownies all must disappear end of chapter five